Hello, I'm Elizabeth and I'm a scientist here at Naval Surface Warfare Center Crane and I'm part of the Elastomer Research Group with Andy and Jim. And today we're going to demonstrate the process of taking a raw polymer and make it into a final molded product. There are three steps in this process. The first step is milling or compounding. The second step is testing. And the third step is molding of the final product. Jim is going to speak with you about milling. I'm going to demonstrate what we do with our chemicals and our machinery to make this uncured block of rubber. The block of rubber then goes into the mold to be made into a useful product. But before it gets there, I give it to Elizabeth for testing. Once Jim hands me the compounded material, I make various test samples so that I can test the material to ensure that the final product has the properties that it needs to function properly in its application. Once the material passes all of the tests, I hand it over to Andy so that he can mold the final product. After the compound has met all the tests, Elizabeth gives it to me and I mold it into this product. And this is the pad dampener. Its purpose is to reduce vibration at the end of this cylinder. Now let's go see Jim in the milling room and get this process started. Thanks, Andy. We're back here at the laboratory mixing mill, the very first area of our processing. We are going to show the class a rubber mixing mill. This is a two-roll mixing mill. We are going to take this rubber and we are going to add all of these additives to these two different types of rubber. What we're actually doing here is finish mixing. Now I'm going to turn the mill on and we're going to put the rubber base on and then we're going to add the chemicals and you can, this will be very interesting. This is called a rolling matrix and the rubber in the back is called a nip. The front roll goes a little bit slower than the back roll, and we not only get a squeezing action, we get a shearing action, and the rubber gets quite warm. But let me put some of my material in here. This is, this is one of our ingredients that give it special properties. This is called hydrocalcite. At the time we add the hydrotalcite, which is a powder, we're going to add one of our plasticizers. We have two plasticizers in this finished batch. One of them aids with electrical properties, the other one aids with low temperature properties, and also fungus resistance. So we have several characteristics that are very important in this compound. Any liquid that we put into rubber is broadly referred to as a plasticizer. And in general, plasticizers soften the rubber. If we have a rubber that is roughly the hardness of your tire on your parents' car, we can put just a little bit of plasticizer in and reduce that hardness. Here's another material that we also add to aid us with fungus resistance. This is zinc borate. Now I will be cutting the rubber to get all these ingredients in in a proper manner. And as you can see, we are actually mixing on these two rolls. Now we have some that slips through the nip, and that's expected, and we are set up to deal with that. This is called sweeping the pan. 
and we sweep it. And I don't like the way it's, that little blob is over here to the right hand side. So I'm gonna cut it off before I put more in. Oh, this is great. You can actually see where the white powder is mixing into the rubber. So some of it is already mixed in and others have, have to receive more work on the mill in order to get it all in. The snapping noise that you hear is actually air. It's just like if you were popping bubble gum. Now, I'm going to add the final ingredient, and this is a curative. This is, allows the rubber to be, go from a sticky, gummy, soft material to a good product that we can use, that you're all familiar with. You can see, that, you can see these little kernels go into the rubber, and it gives you another idea of just how powerful the mixing process is. You can, you can also see them kind of blend in. Now, I will not let them go in just round and round. I'm going to cut them so they will blend in properly from the left to the right of the mill. And this is, a, this is called a pig. It has nothing to do with a four-legged animal. It's just called a pig, and we can, it's an industrial term for it, and we blend it end to end as a very efficient way to achieve this uniform mixture all the way across. I will do this two or three times. And then we'll inspect it. We now have a finished batch. If I were to add more plasticizer, we call the liquid material, would it make this batch harder or softer? If you recalled that the addition of more plasticizer would make this batch softer, you would be correct. Now we're going to send this batch over to Elizabeth for further testing. Now that Jim has finished compounding, we need to test the material for its strength. If you remember the sample that I showed you earlier, we loaded it into this machine and it's going to stretch it until it breaks and then record how much force was required to break it. And this camera is going to measure how long it stretches. I have a question for you. What can we add to this material to allow it to stretch further before breaking? You may have answered plasticizer because you remember Jim mentioning that plasticizer makes the material softer, but there is actually no straightforward answer to this question. All of the additives working together will determine the final properties of the final product. Now that the testing is finished, we're going to hand it over to Andy so that he can show you how to mold the final product. After Elizabeth is done testing the compound, it's now time to mold it. I'll put this part of the mold in. Now I'll put the rest of it in. I'll slide it back and then I'll set the pressure on the press and that I'm going to run it up and reduce the pressure this is called burping I'm trying to get the air out of the product it's been 30 minutes the product is cured I'm removing it from the press I'm going 
gonna open the mold and show you the product. And at this time, it'll be a finished product. Now the flashing will have to be trimmed so that it winds up looking like this and that is a finished product. There you go, the third and final step and I'd like you to look around your classroom and see what elastomer products you can find. What elastomer products have you found in your classroom? Andy, I can think of a few. The rubber stopper on a flask in the chemistry lab. The soft protection on our cell phones. And the bottom of an ordinary door stop in the classroom floor. It's also the grip, rubber grip on your pen or on your earbud. So if you think elastomers seem cool and interesting, remember there's lots of options for careers, such as mixing and compounding, molding, and testing. Thank you and I hope you enjoyed learning about elastomer processing.